Hello fellow old schoolers. I had a lot of time today to just make a bunch of old school videos, so here's another match from the tournament of the Eel Castle Cup 2.0. Now when I saw this I realized we recently had a very similar matchup. This is a matchup between the deck and robots. This is actually a different version of the deck than the one we saw previously. That was the moon deck. This is more like a regular version of the deck. But the matchup analysis and the uh, deck rundown will be very similar. So if you haven't watched that previous game between the moon deck and robots, or if you've simply just forgotten about that matchup, I'll put down a link uh, in a comment below and uh, you can watch that video uh, after this one or maybe before just to go over this particular matchup if you want to. For now, let's kick back and watch how this battle plays out. And we have robots on the left here and no sorry, the deck is on the left on the dragon play mat and robots is on the right. I don't know who's on the play. You can see it's a Travis on the side. Okay, the moon deck is on the play. Volcanic Island, nothing more. Let's see what robots can make happen. Underground C. Slow starts from both players. Both are fully powered, as far as I know. Well, this is a really a cutthroat matchup. Okay, Demonic Tutor out of uh, robots. As a response, there's an Ancestor Recall out of the deck. Uh, it does this uh, here because then the other guy can't counter it. So nicely played. Now Robots will uh, look through his uh, library to find a, a card. Now it could be an Ancestor Recall, depending on how many cards he has in hand. He could also take a Library of Alexandria because that can't be countered. Um, I think I would. If he has, uh, and then save up for the library. It is such a good card against the deck. Let's see what he chooses. Strip mine. Mox, okay. Hmm. Wonder what he picked then. Okay, strip mine the volcanic island. Cracks the moon deck out of counter magic. Doesn't play anything. How odd. No library though. Time warp out of the. Okay. Immediately after he taps out, that's an ancestor recall. He must have tutored for that then. I think I would have taken the Library of Alexandria, but yeah. Hard to say. It also depends on what he has in hand. He might have a library in hand. He might have. <laughs> that could be the reason. There we have it. Brutal start from robots. So, drawing into. Uh, he's in within library range because of that uh, ancestor recall. Getting down on IC here. Immediate disenchant of the. The deck is quite, quite mana starved here. Only an underground C and a, and a plane, so he can't even counter. And there's an active library against him. Tetra was coming out. 4 4 flying. It can split up into 1 1 flyers. Immediate softer pressures on it. So. Or was it. What was it? I think it was the softer pressures. Yeah, it's out of the game. We need four life. Okay, here they come. Four life uh, for robots. Now this doesn't really matter in this matchup. Life points aren't uh, as crucial as the matchup we saw before this. That was between two burn decks. Neither of these decks will uh, try to burn the other guy out. It's more about uh, winning the longer game here. Chaos Orb. I can't see the final card. Could be a Felber Stone. But really see that library and insisted recall uh, working over time here. Okay, it discards. Uh, a copy artifact tries to activate it, and the other guy disenchants it in a response. Okay, that's what happened. Okay, it was a copy artifact on the Chaos Orb. When he tried to activate it, it was disenchanted, and then he chaos orb uh, one of the lanes. I think he he wanted to double chaos orb uh, the lanes out of the deck, which would be a brutal play. But he got one of them, and the deck really needs four mana to function here. And he also needs a double blue mana. Ok, 
Okay, another. Okay, this time a Triskillion. It can't be countered, so that's already three points of damage here. Immediate soft to plowshares. Oh, really? He just takes a life. I think he should have shot with it. Shoot the deck twice and shoot itself for one. Okay. But the deck uh, puts down a library, uh, a book, just to counteract the active library. Clawing back here into the game. Okay, four more life for the robots. Now I don't mean to be nitpicky here, but I really think the best play here would be to shoot the deck a bit and then sh the Tushkillion shoot itself for one so that it could go into the graveyard. But I don't know this deck as well as the pilot does obviously, but I do, I would imagine that he plays with Animate Dead to get it right back in. And also Time Twister. We shall see. Attacking with the factory for two here, now another Tetra was Perhaps he has so many cards in hand that he doesn't really mind just gaining life. Okay, so the deck really needs to read over time here. It needs to deploy a lot of mana. I went over the, the deck's different phases in the previous matchup, and this is phase one. The deck really needs to get that book going, uh, find out how to handle the library, and um, get some card advantage. Okay, the factory pokes in again for a short visit, just for two points of damage, putting the deck down to 16 points of life here. Now animating the Tetravis. So, Undead Flying Robot. Coming in here, next turn it'll split up unless the deck can do something. But we see Robot is outside uh, library range at this point, really trying to go for the kill here, pressuring in, um, trying to overwhelm the deck's answers. No answer here, so the Tetra was splits up. Now the counters have uh, summoning sickness, so they can't attack, and Tetravis is only a 0-1 because of that animate dead, so it can't attack. Uh, it wouldn't make sense to attack with the Tetravis. But next turn, the little flying fellas can get in. And we know that the moon deck plays with a bunch of modes, and these won't really be that effective against this uh, version of robots. Now transmute artifact. On ah oh, on uh, the Tetravis, that's actually a great idea. But I think it gets countered here by the deck. Okay, it gets countered. It takes for with the factory again for two. Otherwise, if that transmute artifact um, got through, it would have uh, traded that Tetravis for another Tetravis, uh, full on with counters. Or Trisk, whatever he chose. One of those. Okay, attacking with a factory and three flying drones, putting the deck down to nine points of life here. The trick needs to stabilize here. He does have a, have a draw engine, uh, and the robot's player has uh, gone outside library range. So the deck does have card advantage, but can he survive long enough to make it count? No. This is game. The deck scoops round one here. A bit surprising actually, but he couldn't draw enough lanes. Next turn, they'll get in for five. He'll be at four points of life. I think perhaps he could have taken, out, taken in a balance or something. I don't know. In any event, um, yeah, this was just really a power play by um, robots getting an assist, a tutor into Ancestral into Library. Um, though the deck had a li uh, an earlier Ancestral as, as well, and both players played really well, I think. Um, the deck seemed slightly mana-starved, and this wasn't helped by uh, Robot Strip Binding and Chaos Orbing his, his lanes. And that's usually the problem when you are mana-starved, that when the opponent recognizes this smells blood, so to speak, uh, you can really just punch in on that area and, um, yeah, uh, it will go from bad to worse, even if you draw a few more lanes, it won't be enough. Okay, we see a sideboard here, two Sarah Angels, a lot of Divine Offerings. That makes it clear that he has taken his Abyss out, both players likely have, um, because they're like a dead draw in this matchup. So making a bit of a transformation sideboard here out of the deck, um, getting in the Sarah Angels, might have taken Motes in as well. Might well be. So. I imagine Robot has done sort of similar stuff, taking in Divine Offerings, maybe Dust to Dust. 
taking the Abyss out. And um, sometimes, as I said in the previous matchup, um, they'll, uh, robots will use uh, Cities of Vietnam in this matchup. I kind of hope he does. <laughs> They're quite fun um, because you can uh, tap them to sacrifice an artifact once the deck tries to destroy it. So it really uh, provides a, a hefty card advantage unless the deck wants to use a source to plowshare on a source on the Sage of Vietnam and then there's that much less removal against robots. So that's my prediction. Sages of Vietnam and Divine Offerings out of robots. And we saw Divine Offerings and Sarah Angels out of the deck. No abyss in this game. Let's check out round number two. Tundra Sol Ring out of the deck, so immediate mana acceleration here. Very important for him. But there's a tutor. Turn one. Out of robots. Strong starts from both players. Mox and a Sol Ring. And we likely have an insisted recall coming in here. Or library. <laughs> Does resemble the first round of this match a bit. Oh, but that's an insisted out of the deck. So very evenly matched here. As a library out of the deck. Hmm. <clears throat> But he can't counter, so I guess we'll see a library, uh, an ancestral out of the. Yeah, there's the ancestral out of uh, robots here. Now all these black cards are collector's edition. Uh, the black bordered cards here uh, in this tournament, uh, collector's edition was allowed. Time walking here. Strip mine. Ooh, we drew into a strip mine. <laughs> really going neck and neck here, blocking the deck. So they have an ancestral each of them. And Robots is ahead a turn after that time walk. Doesn't play anything with those four mana. And might have a counter spell. Keep that up. Let's see if the deck can get in some mana. Okay, yeah. Strip mining one of the underground seas. Cracking the robot deck out of out of counter magic. There's a black lotus cracking that immediately. What's going on here? Oh, a divine offering! He took that in. Those boxes should be removed from the game, actually. They shouldn't be in the graveyard. Brutal punch in from the deck here. Then time walking. And a factory. So, what a turnaround this was. Just bombing robots' mana base away and pulling ahead here from the deck. Now we need a book. Oh, uh, what's that? Brain Geyser for two. Immediate counter spell out of the robots. Robots really reeling here not to get overrun by the deck. Felverstone coming out. What's now? Oh, Sarah Angel. Another counter spiller. Robots just defending itself, really going on the back foot here, but now it's a counter punch from Robot. What a game this is. Sushi coming down. Really a show of strength out of both decks at this point. Divine Offering on the Sushi. Smashing each other's stuff here. It looked like a demonic tutor using the Felverstone and a Tundra. Now this smells like a mind twist or recall. I suppose both would be fine. Depending on how many cards he has in hand to use uh, on the recall. Punching in with the factory here, putting robots down to 15 points of no, yeah, 15 points of life. Brain Geyser, out of robots, two cards, City of Brass, and a Sol Ring. Putting robots down to 12 points of life here. Put down another Philbo Stone and Brain Geyser for a bunch here. Oh, I, no, I think he, um, he regrows the Brain Geyser and then Brain Geyser for a bunch. That must have been the tutor target, using the Felver Stone for the regrowth, because um, you can use the mana from the City of Brass when you have a Felver Stone. From the opponent's City of Brass. So, yeah, that was it. Counter the uh, tutor for the regrowth, got up the Brain Geyser, used that. A lot of card advantage to the deck now. Okay, the deck, uh, I mean, robots trying to uh, start enough an attack here. Yeah, but 
with so many cards. Uh, now, he should definitely shoot the deck twice and shoot itself for one, otherwise the deck will gain life. No, he shoots him for three. That's a mistake again. I think they're discussing it here. The correct play is to shoot the other guy for two, and he does so here. Good. I think uh, maybe the deck told him this, or he knew. I don't know. Okay, a couple of books here. So, we've skipped phase one. We're in phase two for the deck. Tetravus coming down. And attacking with the factory. Now, the deck has sufficient mana. He has an active book. He might even have two active books. Yeah, he has enough mana for that. So, I think the end game here will kick into overdrive. If the robots can't finish this, I can't remove those books in the next few turns. Uh, I think the deck will run away with it. It doesn't take much for it. Yeah, there we have a disenchant. He has four mana untapped. He can counter or he can draw in the other guy's end step. Transmute artifact on the Sol Ring, trying to get uh, more aggression in there. Mana draining it. So, attacking the two factories. Blocking with one factory, pumping that factory. Okay, killing the other factory. Getting in for two, putting the deck down to 12 point of life. Robots might have, might be an oversight. He could have attacked for one and then pump, pumped it with his own factory, but he wouldn't have done any damage then. Now the deck is uh, starting the card advantage process here. Uh, trading card for card and uh, just grinding card advantage as much as it can. Recalling it could be the coup de gras. The finishing blow here. Taking the tutor and then just to recall up. Robots is in top deck mode. We are in phase 3 pretty soon for the deck. I still have a, a factory getting in for 2. Blood Moon! Oh man, what a turnaround! I never saw that coming. Ancest Recall as a response. That's pretty cheeky actually. So the other guy, he can't really... Um, Tutor now. I think he would have tutored for a fireball. Chaos Orb. Chaos Orbing here. Okay, this needs to hit. Oh, immediate. Hit here. Very secure flip. Both of these players are very. Uh, they're veterans, I think. Now it's a tutor. So yes, I got rid of that Blood Moon. Really, a surprising play. Um, very nice, but I think we only have one more turn for robots here. Uh, next turn it'll be a fireball. Animating something here to Travis. Doesn't matter, the deck doesn't need to counter this. It draws twice with, with books at the other guy's head step. Now he needs counter back up for that fireball. That's it. That's the fireball. Bam! Blowing robots away in the second match. Brutal uh, second match. This one very excellent game. So we have another round of sideboarding here for, and then we're going into the finishing round and deciding round of this matchup. Now robots will be on the play here. I think there was a mulligan out of the deck. Does he discard a card here? It seemed like he did this twice. Or am I misreading it? Maybe not. Okay. Okay. Using a copy artifact to get some momentum going. Robots recognizing that he needs to uh, to finish this. Uh, he is the beat down in this matchup, and he certainly is. Ah, oh, now that says a recall out of the deck. Okay, sushi out of uh, 
robots answered with a source of plowshares from the deck. The deck uh, is ahead here. Yeah, um, and the robots has taken a two points of damage from the City of Brass, it seems. Okay, cracking the Lotus. Ooh, as a mind twist outside the camera angle. I think the camera is slowly skewing towards uh, one of the directions here. Okay, yeah, mind twisting a Tetravus and a transmute artifact and another robot. There's the book. Having secured his card advantage, the deck sets his teeth in here. Oh, uh, doesn't want to wait. I think these guys are playing against the clock. I think they don't have a lot of time left for this uh, matchup. Oh, Sage of Vietnam. So the deck is playing a bit more aggressively than you do usually see. Coming in with the Sarah Angel here. Now that Sage of Vietnam, it would have been a great pick if it had only gotten out a bit sooner. But obviously recognizing that the deck had taken his Abyss out, so the Sage just makes sense now. I wanted to t uh, tap the Sage at the end step of the other guy, but the Sage has summoning sickness. Now he can use it to get increased draws. He taps the Black Mox, uh, the Copy Artifact, and uh, sacrifices it with the Sage of Latinam, digging for an answer against that unanswered so uh, Sarah Angel there. As a black man in his mana pool here. Now, as a distant shot, on our divine offering, as it is on the on the uh, book, uh, it's been a recall out of the deck. Getting the ancestral recall. This goes really fast from these guys. Um, attacking with the Sarah Angel, putting the robots down to nine points of life here. Just recall the ancestral recall and uh, use that to get to just pull further ahead and cut advantage here. So, aside from losing that book, which was a bit of a blow, actually. Uh, this is a textbook, the deck uh, strategy here. Really old school actually, old school version of, of the deck using uh, Sarah Angels like this. Okay, I see Manipulator here. Oh, getting mana drained. Four mana in his uh, in his pool. Getting in for four, putting him down to five. Like that's another angel used uh, the mana drain to play that. Yeah, it's eight points of damage next turn. We need a balance or something. Sacrificing the black mox, tapping it in before, trying to get a balance. The deck might have counter magic, but you gotta ride the odds, right? Triskillion coming down. It won't matter. <laughs> the angels will just fly over the head of that robot. Oh, sorry. He's actually down to two, and there's a divine offering. So. Yeah, he forfeits the game, that's game. I think he, he could have taken one more draw. I mean, he could even uh, draw another time with the Sage of Latinam, sacrificing another Mox or something, but yeah, uh, just to get a balance. But the deck likely had a counter spell. Perhaps he even showed him that uh, at the end of the game here, just showing him that, well, I have a counter spell. Uh, I couldn't make that out on the camera. I tried to uh, listen to what they were saying, uh, but uh, they didn't discuss that. <laughs> Though Robots uh, did end the game by shooting himself by with the Triskillion. <laughs> so he wanted to go out in his own way. So a brutal punch down in the final round here by, by the deck after sideboard. It just seemed like the deck had uh, a really nice sideboard strategy against him here with the Divine Offerings. And uh, that dust to dust was a cheeky, cheeky thing. Um, though I do think that that Blood Moon out of the robots really caught the deck by surprise. It, it, it certainly did for me. Not that it uh, changed the, uh, the outcome of that game, but um, still closely fought this one. 2-1 two -two -one for the deck against the robots. Nice game. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.